Hi, good day! I am Angeline Pardo and for today, I will be your tour guide in exploring the beautiful region of NCR or the National Capital Region. But before I start, I'm just giving you a few and uh, light knowledge or background information of me as your tour guide. I finished junior high school at Governor Feliciano Libiste Memorial National High School with honors, graduated at Lemery Senior High School in Accountancy, Business and Management with honors, and a current student of Lemery College in a College of Tourism. So, uh, if you are all ready, then let's start and let's proceed. NCR, the National Capital Region, is the capital city of the Philippines, prime tourism center in the country, and also the center of Philippines culture, arts, education, commerce, industry, and tourism. So here in NCR, English is the basic language and Tagalog dialect is the national language. This region is composed of 17 major cities and municipalities and the smallest and densely populated region in the country. So for the tourism advertisement, I am going to present to you a video of the uh, tourism advertisement of the NCR. to meet the big shots. I found a sweet spot between cultures and hung out with the artsy crowd. I even picked up a few things along the way. After that, things kicked into overdrive. It started with a whirlwind through the streets. And unforgettable eats. A celebration of flavor in every bite. And an epic new party at every turn. The best thing about it here, the good times are never over. Okay. So, um... So, if you love a modern architecture with a blend of historical architecture, I am sure and I am fully well known that you will love the NCR or the National Capital Region. So, let's go first to the first uh, municipality in the NCR and it is the City of Manila. City of Manila is founded in 1571 and it is the capital of the Philippines, known as the Pearl of the Orient Seas and famous for its country club, restaurants, eateries, commercial properties, parks, and gardens. So Manila is made up of 16 administrative districts, Dabinondo, Ermita, Intramuros, Malate, Paco, Pandacan, Port Area, Quiapo, Sampaloc, San Andres, San Miguel, San Nicolas, Santa Ana, Santa Cruz, Santa Mesa, and Tondo. So for their tourist attractions, uh, the first one is the Ayala Bridge located in San Miguel and Araceros. So this bridge is built in 1872 by Don Jacobo Sobel de Ayala and the bridge links San Miguel and Araceros di districts. So it became the first structural steel bridge spanning the Pasig River. Next one is the Archdiocesan Museum of Manila. So, it is called the History of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. So, the collection includes ecclesiastical, liturgical, and various antique items. Wow! Okay. Next one is the Binondo Church located at Plaza de la Basco, Binondo. So, it is founded by the Dominican Friars in 1596. And this church is a fine example of Spanish colonial structure. So, it was badly damaged during the World War II and was only restored in 1972. Next one is the Central Bank Money Museum uh, located at the Banco Central ng Pilipinas Complex, Roas Boulevard. So, this was established on January 3, 1974 from the donations of illustrious collectors. So, it aims to trace the history of the Philippines through its currency and to assemble a fine collection of rare and unusual coins from all over the world. Next is the Chinatown, the famous Chinatown in Binondo. So it is located at the northern bank of the historic Pasig River and this area is proof of the long relationship of Filipino with Chinese. Next one is the Chinese Cemetery, located at South Gate on Aurora Avenue, Blumentritt. So uh, founded in the mid-1850s by Lim Ong and Tan Quinsen, 
Tan Quin Sien or Don Carlos Palanca to accommodate the many Chinese who were not allowed to be buried in Spanish cemeteries. So, one building houses the ashes of the cremated on two floors and on the third. The bones of those will return to mainland China. So, the poor are buried in terraces to the left of the Buddhist temple. Okay. Next one is the De La Salle University Art Gallery located at 2411 Taft Avenue. So exhibits includes painting done by the Filipino artists. So the Filipino artists puts their uh, uh, paintings there in the University Art Gallery of De La Salle. Next one is the Ermita Church located at Ermita. So the patroness of this church was founded in 1591 by Senora de Guilla. Next one is the Fort Santiago. Fort Santiago is the fort, uh, the fort guards the northwestern entrance to Intram Intramuros. It was built over 150-year period starting 1571 over the ashes of wooden fort built by Raja Sulaiman. Okay, the last Filipino ruler before the coming of the Spaniards. Next one is the Liwasang Bonifacio. Okay, so a park dedicated to Andres Bonifacio, the leader of the Philippine Revolution of 1896, who unlike Rizal, advocate armed revolution against Spain. Next one naman uh, is the Mabini Shrine. So Apolinario Mabini, the intellectual leader of the Philippine Revolution, live in this house as a uh, law student. Uh, by the way, just a disclaimer, all videos, uh, I mean all the videos and pictures are credited to the rightful owner and there are no copyrights infringement. Okay, thank you po. Okay, so the next one is the Malati Church and built during the second half of the 18th century. Okay, uh, it was founded by the Augustinian friars as a simple stone church under the patronage of Nuestra Señora de los Remedios. Next one is the Manila Bay, okay? Manila Bay is uh, considered the finest harbor in the Far East and the site of the infamous mock battle. Manila Bay is also the perfect site from which to view what many claim to be the most beautiful sunsets in the world. Next one is the Manila Cathedral, located at Plaza Roma in Tramuros, and the cathedral is the seat of the Catholic Archdiocese of Manila. Uh, stained glass windows depicting the Christianization of the Philippines and mosaic artwork decorated the walls. Next one is the Museum Pambata. This museum, this museum is composed of six steam room named Kalikasan, the environment, Manila Noon or the Old Manila in English, Tuklas or Science, Paglaki Ko or Career Option, Katawan Ko, Body Works, and Bata sa Mundo or Children in the Global Village. Very interesting. Okay, so next one is the Paco Church. Paco St. Pan Pancratius Chapel is the site of many quiet weddings. The area around it was declared a national park in 1966. Next one is the Paco, Paco Park and Cemetery. So, the cemetery was originally surrounded by a massive circular wall within which victims of the cholera epidemic were interrated for the price of 20 pesos only back then for 3 years, renewable, when all niches were filled remains. Uh, uh, okay, so today only the remains of Governor General Ramon Solano are still in the chapel. In 1966, the cemetery was declared a national park which make it a charming spot but ideal for quiet promenades, okay? So, next one is the Palacio del Gobernador, and it is the office of the Intramuros Administration, and, uh, and it is present, presentedly housed in there. Next one is the famous Quiapo Church. So, record revealed that the district of Quiapo and its church were founded in 1586, and the present structure was built over the period of three decades from 1930s to 1960s. Next one is the Rizal Park. Uh, for 74 years, it was used by Spaniards uh, as an execution ground for Filipino rebels and mutineers in 1902. So the Rizal Shrine, 
uh, the shrine houses items used by the national hero Jose Rizal when he was imprisoned here a few days before his execution in uh, December 30, 1986. San Agustin Church uh, is the one of the oldest, or should I say, the oldest stone church in Metro Manila, dating back on 1571. Next one is the Santa Ana Church was founded by Franciscan missionaries in 1578 and the present structure was built in 1720. Wow, do you imagine how amazing Filipinos uh, uh, still preserve this kind of infrastructure that was built in uh, 1720? Next one is the UST or University of Santo Tomas Museum of Arts and Science. So the private museum is considered the largest and most extensive in the Far East. Next one is the dancing fo dancing fountain located at the Plaza Loton. Okay, so the the dancing fountain is highly highlighted by colored lights. And the last one for the tourist attraction of the Manila is the Museum of the Filipino People. The museum houses a collection of artifacts taken from San Diego cargo ships dating back to 1590. The museum likewise showcases interesting porcelain items excavated from various archaeological sites. And, and now, let us move forward to the Pasay City. Uh, Pasay City is founded on December 2, 1863 and the first class highly urbanized city in metropolitan Manila, Philippines. Pasay City is the third smallest political subdivision in the national capital region and is known for its entertainment, business restaurants, coffee shops, clubs, particularly those located along Ross Boulevard facing the Manila Bay. Okay. An explanation says that Pasay got its name from the princess named Dayang Dayang Pasay. She was a princess of the Damayan Kingdom that existed around uh, 1175. She owned the lands now comprising the territories of Kulikuli, Pasay, and Baklaran. For their tourist attraction or for the tourist attraction of uh, Pasay City, number one is the Coconut Palace, the Cultural Center of the Philippines or the CCP, uh, Philippine Museum of Anthropology, GSIS Museum and Archives. Oh, it's the last one, okay? So, GSIS Museum and Archives are, uh, is the showcase of the Philippine contemporary art, features the masterpiece of the country's famous painter and sculptures, namely, Amor Solo, Ocampo, Kaluwag, Orlina, Abueva, and etc. Okay, so uh, it's kind of uh, quick, but the tourist attraction and that municipality is good and a nice spot to visit with. Okay, next one is the Pasig City. Pasig City is founded in 1572 and it is one of the oldest towns in the Philippines, having been found in 1572 by early Spanish settlers. Pasig City was once known primarily, primarily as an industrial center, but in recent years, it has developed into a thriving residential commercial community with countless business centers, prominent schools, renowned restaurants, and lifestyle development. On July uh, 26, 1994, the Senate and the House of Representatives enacted Republic Act 7829, converting the municipality of Pasig into a highly urbanized city. On December 8, 1994, our President Fidel B. Ramos signed it into the law, and the people of Pasig ratified this through a plebiscite on January, 20, January 21, 1995. Okay, so now let's visit their tourist attraction. The first one is the Concepcion uh, Residence, uh, located in Plaza Rizal. This multi-story mansion was used as both Japanese and American headquarters during the World War II. The American flag was raised first here on the Liberation Day, February 19, 1945, and the house has now been converted into the Pasig excuse me, National Museum. Next one is the Doña Jeronimas Cave, a legendary cave located along the bank of the Pasig River or the Ilog ng Pasig. 
Muchanam Pasig Market. So this uh, 11 tower with a revolving tough flower is the center of the business activities in Pasig. Next one is the Pasig City Hall. Bahay Natisa. So Bahay Natisa is the house of Spanish architectural designs, serve as a venue for art shows and cultural forums. So uh, based on the architecture or the form of the a tourist attraction, I can say that we are highly and uh, impactly influ influenced or colonized by the Spaniards. Next one is the Heroes Monument, a provincial capital, Assemblea Magna Markers. Okay, so that is the last one. So, Assemblea Magna Markers commemorates the start of the Filipino relig uh, revolution. Okay. So since we are also done in Pasig, now let let us move forward to one of the most popular place and uh, stop by in the Philippines and is the Quezon City. So Quezon City is a highly urbanized city and the most populous city in the Philippines. It was founded by a name after Manuel L. Quezon, the second president of the Philippines, to replace Manila as the national capital in 1948. The city is five times bigger than Manila. Imagine how big that uh, municipality is shown in the map. And it is the country's second biggest city. Quezon City, car uh, chartered city and capital of the Philippines from 1948 to 1976. The city is located immediately northeast of Manila in central Luzon and named for President Manuel Luis Quezon who selected the site in 1939. It officially replaced Manila as the capital in 1948. So uh, now, let us... Uh, Explore the tourist attraction of Quezon City. The first one is the Amoranto Stadium. The stadium was built in honor of former mayor of Quezon City, Norberto S. Amoranto. Okay. So the next one is the Araneta Center. Prior to the establishment of the Makati Commercial Center, the Araneta Center served as the main shopping district of Quezon City. So even uh, even today, downtown Cubao is still lined with the numerous commercial establishments inclu including theaters, banks, boutiques, department store, restaurants, and many more. The Balara plant. So Balara plant filters the water from La Mesa Dam and supplies some 600,000 gallons of clean and potable water to the Metro Manila area. So a portion of the plant has numeric uh, number of public swimming pools. So interesting, right? Next one is the Barrio La Loma. Another historical landmark in Quezon City is La Loma. So it is said to be the site of the first battle between Filipino and the Americans during the Philippine-American War. Wow, amazing. So next one is the Barrio Pugadlawin. Barrio Pugadlawin is the site where founder of Katipunan Andres Bonifacio launched the Philippine Revolution against the Spaniard in 1896. The uprising was called the Cry of Balintawak. Next one is the Camp Crame or Camp Cream and the Aguinaldo. So two of the most important military headquarters in the Philippines. Next one is Museo ng Buhay Pilipino. This museum displays the old furnitures, the farm tools and implements costume and carriage used by Filipino throughout the ages. So if you want a history and the past uh and uh, you want to explore the past of the Philippines, the, uh, the past life of the Filipino people, you should uh, add Museo ng Boy Pilipino located at the Central Bank Mint Building, East Avenue, Quezon City, as one of your tourist destination. Next one is the Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife. So, this zoological and botanical garden, situated near the Quezon Memorial Circle, is a haven for natural, uh, for nature lovers, young and old. So, the, the Hector 80 complex of wooded area has a children's playground and a man-made lagoon for boating. Next one is the Quezon Memorial Circle or Shrine. So, uh, the monument was built at the center of the 27 hectare, hectare Rotunda Park that has become a kind of exercise and recreation center among the local residents. 
Next one is the University of the Philippines. The state-owned University of the Philippines, which was established in June 1908, Considered one of the finest center of learning in the Far East, sprawled is a set amidst tall ancient trees and verdant fields. And the last one is Our Lady of Edza Shrine. So the this uh structure and this uh tourist attraction was built by the grateful Filipino people in honor of the blessed Virgin Mary for her protection and guidance during the Edza Revolution. So, uh, since we are done in Quezon City, now let's move forward and let us all visit Taguig. So, Taguig was founded on April 25, 1587 and you can see the part of the Taguig on the map. It is uh, the red one. So, it is the seventh most populous city in the Philippines and it is known for the Bonifacio Global City, one of the leading financial centers of the Philippines. The original 800 farmer fishermen settlers of the area were good at threshing rice after harvest. Hence, they were referred to as mga tagagiik and their settlement as pook ng mga tagagiik. Spanish friar Fray Alonso de Alvarado, together with uh, conquistador Rey Lopez de Villalobos, who crossed Pasig River to reach Taguig in 1571, found tagagiik difficult to pronounce and could only pronounce the word sounding like tagi gi tagi ig so many mispronouncement later tagi ig was shortened to the present day tagig so instead of saying tagi ig or tagagi ig uh, it was pronounced and it was uh, known as tagig so let's move forward to their tourist attraction so the first one is the archdiocesan shrine of saint anne so this church was built by the Augustinian uh, during the 16th century and is considered one of the oldest in the country. It houses the holy image of Saint Antagig's patron saint. Next one is Dambanang Kawayan of Saint John the Baptist Church located at Barangay Ligig Tipas. The church is made mostly of bamboo during the Japanese occupation. It served as the torture site for some 400 men who were later brought to San to Fort Santiago and were allegedly killed, okay? Next one is the Muslim Mosque. This mosque is a uh, place of worship for Muslim residents of Maharlika village, but it is also open to the public as a tourist attraction or tourist destination. Next one is the Parola. Wow. Okay. Parola is located at Napindan River, Barangay Napindan. This 18th century lighthouse is believed to have served as the Katipunan's Center for Coordination and Communication. Next one is the Plaza Bonifacio. Uh, Plaza Bonifacio, uh, it is a statue of Andres Bonifacio, the father of Katipunan, stands in the memory of the time he spent there. And uh, uh, the last one is the Plaza Quezon. This plaza is the only monument, monument built in uh, honor of President Manuel L. Quezon while he was still alive. And the last one is the Simborio. So this Simborio or catacomb was built by the Augustinian during the 16th century located at the Taguig Cemetery, Barangay Tuktukan. So some of the famous dishes or foods, delicacies in NCR is adobo. So uh, foreigners uh, love to taste the uh, unique taste of adobo. So, if you are to drop in NCR, and maybe you want to try this adobo. Uh, the next one is lechon. And there are so many street foods here in NCR. Okay? So, that would be uh, the part of my reporting. And the few, uh, I mean the more information about the NCR, uh, are going to report. Uh, are being reported by my uh, report meets and i guess that's it thank you so much for watching and i hope uh this pandemic ends soon so that we can travel again thank you so much and mabuhay